So in this module, we're going to be talking about the resolution, which is an inference rule. So, so far we've been talking about propositional logic. We've been talking about syntax and semantics of propositional logic. And we discussed one inference rule, specifically modus ponens. And the idea of, a, of an inference rule is, can we do uh, manipulation of syntax in the syntactic land over formulas in order to derive, in order to prove a, a new formula? And the idea is, is that inference rule under that specific set of logic, illogical formulas, is that sound and complete. And what we have seen is if I apply just modus ponens on propositional logic, I get soundness, but I don't get completeness. And then what that means is if I have a bunch of formulas that are entailed, that are true, I'm not going to be able to get all of them if I apply modus ponens on propositional logic. So we talked about two ways of solving that. And then we discussed the first way. The first idea was instead of looking at all of propositional logic, let's look at a subset of it. And that subset is propositional logic with only horn clauses. So we defined horn clauses during the last module and we looked at propositional logic with only horn clauses. And in that case, if I apply modus ponens, then I get soundness and completeness, everything is great. The other option is, what if I don't want to limit my propositional logic? What if I want to look at all of propositional logic? Can I make my inference rule a little bit fancier, a little bit more powerful? So in this module, we are going to be talking about a new type of inference rule, specifically called resolution, as a way of getting both soundness and completeness. All right. So to start with, I, I want to just write out a few things that, that we're all aware of, but uh, let's just get on the same page on all of them. So, um, all right, so let me just write out a few things. So, so if we have P implies Q, well, what is that equivalent to? That is equivalent to negation of P or Q. Let's just write out some of these equivalences here. If I get, if I have negation of P, um, if I have negation of P and Q, what is that? What is that equivalent to? Well, I can apply De Morgan's law, and that gives me gets me negation of p or negation of q. And then, if I have negation of p or q, what is that going to be? That is going to be equal to negation of p and negation of q. I want to remove these extra lines. All right, so these are a few equivalences that we all agree over. This is just how they are. Like, it's, it's just like truth, right? So if you look at the truth table, truth table of, of these, you're going to get, you're going to get these, these equivalences. And the reason I'm defining these equivalences is, in general, I would like to write everything in the form of disjunctions and conjunctions. OK, so let me define a few other things here. So, so I'm going to define a literal as a propositional symbol P or a negation of a propos propositional symbol negation of P. Okay, so a literal is just P or negation of P where P is just a propositional symbol. Okay. So then based on that, one can define a clause to be a conjunction, sorry, to be a disjunction of propositional symbols. Okay, so we talked about horn clauses during the last module, but we never like defined what a clause is. So a clause is just an or of a bunch of literals. It's just a disjunction of a bunch of literals. So I can have a clause that's like P1 or negation of P2 maybe, or P3. This is a clause, okay? Because it's just an or of a bunch of literals, okay? So then the question is, what is a horn clause? So could we, we defined horn clauses last lecture, but we could think about horn clauses a little bit differently here. So a horn clause is basically a clause. It's just a disjunction of a bunch of literals with at most one positive literal. So I'm going to refer to this guy as a positive literal and this guy as a negative literal. And a horn clause basically says you have at most one positive literal in, in, in your clause. For example, this clause that I've written here is not a horn clause, right? Because it has two positive literals, P1 and P3. But for example, I can have another horn clause that is P1 or negation of P2 or negation of P3. And then this is going to be um, a horn clause because it has at most one positive literal that, that is P1. Okay, so this is just another way of looking at horn clauses. So going back here, right? So we have a implies C, how can we write it? We can write it as negation of A or C. We have A and B implying C, right? What is that equal to? It's negation of this first part. I can use the Morgan's law and that gives me negation of A or negation of B or C. 
remember like again again this is this is a clause now and it's a horn clause and and again like defining what i've uh, defined so far a literal is going to be a prepositional uh, symbol either positive or negative either p or negation of p a clause is just a disjunction of these literals and a horn clause is just a clause with at most one positive all right, so now when I'm thinking about modus ponens, I can actually write it out as, as clauses, right? Like remember I have A and A implies C and that gets me C. That is what modus ponens tells me. Instead of A implies C, I can just write it as a clause and I can write it as negation of A or C, okay? And kind of like intuitively, like what is really happening is we are canceling out A and negation of A. That's why we are getting C. And the reason I'm defining modus ponens like this, I'm rewriting it, is this kind of helps us to think about this more general resolution rule that I'll be talking about in a few slides. Okay. So the idea of resolution is I don't want to limit myself to specific types of clauses. I can talk about general clauses. And general clauses are, what are they? There are disjunctions of, of positive or negative literals. And the idea of resolution is if you have a bunch of clauses, You'll have a rule, you'll have an inference rule that cancels out your positive and negative literals. So here is an example. So if it is raining or snowing, that's part of your knowledge base. And if it is not snowing or there is traffic, one can infer that it is raining or there is traffic. Why, uh, let's think about like why can't we, why can we infer this even intuitively, okay? So, so if it is snowing, right? So, so, so if it is snowing, then there has got to be, if a snowing is true, right, there has got to be traffic, okay, so that's how I get traffic. And if it is not snowing, right, if it's not snowing, then there has got to be raining because it's either snowing or, 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 or raining. So that's how I get rain. Right? So intuitively, that is why you're getting this rain or traffic. And in some sense, you can think about snow and negation of snow canceling each other out. Because, because either if it is snowing or, or, or if it is not snowing, we are going to get traffic or rain out of it. And then this is basically resolution inference rule applied to one example. Okay? One can think about this much more generally and think about a clause F1 or kind of disjuncted through Fn or P, and then another clause where you have negation of P or G1 through Gn. And then the idea of an inference rule is based on the, these two premises, we can conclude a new clause that cancels out P and negation of P. Okay. So this is called resolution. All right. So is, is resolution sound? So, so that's a very good question to ask. In general, we want it to be sound because we want to be able to derive things that are actually true. So is it, like remember this example, is it true that I can derive rain or traffic here? So, so how do I check that? Well, to check soundness, I need to actually get to the models and meanings of each one of these formulas and I need to check entailment. So let's check that on this example. So if I have rain or snow, what is models of rain or snow? Models of, so, so I have here, my, my truth table is going to be a little bit larger because I have both snow, rain and traffic. So I need to look at zero one values for all of them. So I have rain or snow, rain or snow correspond to these shaded areas. So that's models of rain or snow. And then I have models of uh, not snow or traffic that corresponds to these shaded areas. And remember, as I add more formulas to my knowledge base, I'm shrinking its models, right? I'm adding more constraints, so I'm shrinking the models. That is why models of, of these two formulas is going to be the intersection of their models. So the intersection is going to be this uh, darker red area. So if I'm checking entailment, if, I, if I'm basically checking if resolution is sound, I should be checking entailment. And what that means is I should be checking if the models of what is in my knowledge base is going to be, is, is going to be uh, as a subset of models of this new formula that I'm trying to derive here. So what's the new formula I'm trying to derive here? Resolution tells me you can derive rain or traffic. And if I look at rain or traffic and models of rain or traffic, I get this green area. So the question is, is the shaded dark, dark red area uh, a subset of the green area? And in this case, it is. So, so it turns out that the resolution is actually sound. So, so in terms of thinking about the models, thinking about the semantics here, we are getting, we are getting soundness. We are ensuring that we are getting truth uh, by applying resolution. Okay? So resolution is sound. So 
as you've kind of seen, resolution only works on clauses, right? Like I've been defining these clauses, which are disjunctions of literals. And then the question is, can I apply resolution to all of propositional logic? And the answer is yes. It actually turns out that the fact, because like if resolution only works on clauses, that is actually enough. And the reason that is actually enough is you can think about any propositional formula and you can write any propositional formula as a conjunction of a bunch of clauses. And that's called a conjunctive, conjunctive normal form. Okay, so a conjunctive normal form, a CNF formula, is a conjunction of clauses. Okay, so, so an example of that is, is it's, it, you have a clause A or B or negation of C, you have another clause, negation of B or D, and an end of these two clauses is, is, a conjunct, is in a conjunctive normal form. Okay, so you can kind of like think of this as equivalent of having a knowledge base where you have each formula is a clause. And when you have a bunch of formulas in your, in your knowledge base, you're basically thinking about and of those formulas, right? So, so a knowledge base basically is an and of a bunch of a conjunction of a bunch of formulas that could be written, let's say, as clauses. All right, so, so then basically every formula that, that is written in propositional logic can be converted into a conjunctive normal form. In a new formula, conjunctive normal form, that's, that's exactly equal, like the, the models of the old formula is exactly equal to the models of the new formula. So how can we do that? Um, it's actually a kind of um, easy way of doing it. It's just, there's just a recipe. Uh, for for trans for converting every formula to a conjunctive normal form. Let's let's look at an example. So let's say that we have a formula. It says summer implies snow, and the whole thing implies bizarre. Okay. So um, here I don't have any ands or ors, right? Like I have this implication. So I need to get rid of that implication. How can I do that? I can basically remove implication and, and write, out, write it out in the form that I talked about earlier, which is negation of the first term or the second term. So this implication, I can write it as negation of the first term, this whole term, or the second term. I can remove this implication and write it uh, in a similar way. I can write it as negation of summer or snow. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the negation inside using the Morgan's law. So I'm going to push the negation inside, make this end negation inside. I have a double negation here. I'm going to get rid of that double negation and make this positive. So now I have a bunch of literals, positive or negative, and I only have like ands and ors. But this is actually not in the conjunctive normal form, right? Because conjunctive normal form means that and of a bunch of ors. This is actually the opposite, right? This is this is or of a bunch of ands. But what you can you can you can actually distribute this or over the and. And then you end up, if you distribute the or over the end, you end up with these two clauses, summer or bizarre, and another clause, which is negation of snow or bizarre. Okay, so, so you end up in a CNF form. Any formula you give me, I can end up in a, in a CNF form. So, so the general recipe for it is if you have, if you have implications or these bidirectional implications, replace them with and and ors and negations. So that's the first thing you wanna do. Bidirectional implication, write it out. As, as, uh, as implications and ands. If you see an implication, write it out as a form of negation and or. If you have any negations, move them inside using the Morgan's law. If you have double negations, remove the double negations. And then at the end, just distribute or over and if you have, if you have any, anything of that form. And you'll end up in the, with a conjunctive normal form. So, so that is kind of the general recipe of converting any propositional logic formula to a CNF form. And then why are we writing this as a CNF form? Because the resolution rule works only on clauses, which is it only works on CNF form formulas. All right. So, so what's the idea of resolution algorithm? Well, why, why are we trying to run resolution? The reason is in general, you might be asking me if F is true or not, right? Like we, we, we care about having that assistant that we can ask from, or we can tell it things. And, and what does that do? That tries to basically check things like entailment, right? So, so if, if, if the knowledge base, if you want to check if a knowledge base is entailing a new formula or not, that's the same thing, right? That's the same thing as checking if negation of F, if the knowledge base contradicts negation of F, or basically checking if negation of F added to the knowledge base is unsatisfiable or not. So how do we run the resolution-based algorithm? Well, what we do is if you ask me if F is entailed or not, I'll add negation of F to my knowledge base. 
And then I convert all my formulas to CNF form. We can do that. And once I have everything to CN in a CNF form, I can apply a resolution. I can keep repeatedly applying resolution until, until everything is converged. And then I can return entailment even only if I'm deriving false. Okay? So that is how we run resolution if, if we want to answer a question about entailment. Let's look at an example here. So let's say I have a knowledge base. This is my knowledge base. It has a bunch of things in it. They're not in a CNF form. They're not in a class form or anything, but, but I have a bunch of formulas. And, and you're asking me if, if this knowledge base entails a new formula and that new formula is C. So how do I check that using resolution? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a negation of C to my knowledge base. I'm gonna make everything to, the, to a CNF form. So using that recipe that I talked about, removing implications and pushing, pushing negations in and distributing ORs over things, right? Once I do that, everything is in a clause form. I have a clause and I have literals, okay? So, so this is my, this is my uh, knowledge base. Everything is in the clause form, in a CNF form. And then I'm gonna repeatedly apply a resolution. So how do I apply a resolution? Let's start from, from these two. So I have A and I have negation of A or B or C. In some sense, A and negation of A gets canceled out. So I can add B or C to my, to my knowledge base using resolution, okay? I have negation of B in my, in my knowledge base. So, so negation of B and B get canceled out and I can add C to my knowledge base. And I've added negation of C to my knowledge base and negation of C and, uh, and C get canceled out and I'll get false. Okay, so after repeatedly applying resolution here, I'm getting false, meaning that when I add negation of the formula, I, I was able to get this contradiction, I was able to get false. And what that means is that knowledge base actually entails the formula, the formula being C in this case. Okay, so knowledge base entails C. Okay, I can derive C. Okay. All right, so a good question to ask is what is the time complexity of these, uh, these algorithms? So, so if you remember modus ponens, right? Like the idea of modus ponens, is, this was the more general form of it, was that at every step, right? Like we would at most uh, kind of like add one propositional symbol uh, to, 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 our, to our knowledge base. And if you're adding one propositional symbol, like if you have like N of them, we have at most like N things to go over. So, so this would be a linear time algorithm, like when you're running modus ponens. It, it's pretty simple. It's, it's, it's also converges fairly quickly because there are N things that we need to go over. But when we think about uh, uh, the, this, this inference rule resolution, but when we are thinking about resolution, we are adding many propositional symbols back to our, back to our um, knowledge base. And then kind of like worst case, you're adding all the subsets of, of, uh, of the disjunctions of these, these symbols to our, to our uh, knowledge base at the end too. So what that means is you have to go over all of them and, and that takes exponential time, right? So, so running resolution is in terms of time complexity, it, it takes exponential time. And it's actually not surprising that it takes exponential time. If you think about what resolution is doing, is it's actually trying to solve a satisfiability problem, right? Like you have clauses and, 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 and these clauses and, and you want to find, you, you want to check satisfiability here. You're doing model checking and then satisfiability is known to be MP complete. So it's not surprising that, that running resolution until convergence actually takes exponential time. So there are really some trade-offs here. Like if, if you think about using horn clauses, uh, you, you, could, you could use modus ponens. The nice thing about it is that it's going to be linear time, but it is less expressive. You're not able to represent everything in propositional logic. You're only limited to horn clauses. But horn clauses turns out, turn out to be kind of useful for, for many applications, especially some applications in programming languages. So, so in those applications, it does make sense to use modus ponens because it, it's faster, it takes linear time. On the other hand, if you really care about all of propositional logic, then, then you really care about dealing with any type of causes. And there you have to use resolution, but the problem with resolution is it's trying to solve an NP-complete problem. It takes exponential 